I just want to do a quick update for you guys on the best settings for Season 2 Reloaded. We're starting here under the graphic settings under quality. As always, make sure render resolution is set to 100. For upscaling and sharpening, I am personally using Fidelity FX Cast. It makes the game just look so much more sharp and makes it much easier to see enemies, especially at long distances. And then I click show more here and I adjust the strength to 75. Now what the slider is doing is adjusting just how sharp Fidelity FX Cast is making your game. So this right here will be personal preference. If 75 looks too sharp for you, turn it down a bit. If it doesn't look sharp enough on your monitor, then turn it up a bit. But this setting is kind of a performance hog. So if you're not getting the FPS you're looking for, you could try switching to something like AMD FSR, either 1.0 or 2.0 will work. And this will give you a huge boost to your FPS, but you will be sacrificing some visual quality to do so. You could also use NVIDIA DLSS, although I have experienced AMD FSR giving better results in terms of FPS. So I would recommend trying those options first. And then for anti-aliasing here, I really wish there was an option to turn it off. There still isn't, but the best option currently is to put Filmic SMAAT2X and then put the anti-aliasing quality to normal. You do lose a little bit of FPS by doing this. Ideally, you'd want to put anti-aliasing to off or to the lowest settings here, but you get a weird film grain effect in game on walls and stuff that can be very distracting. And it overall, just hurts your visibility pretty significantly in my opinion so i'd recommend putting these two settings to normal and filmic smaat2x video memory scale i do have this turned all the way up now if you are experiencing a lot of stutters or anything like that you could try turning this down a little bit moving down here to texture resolution i have this set to normal as well as texture filter anisotropic both set to normal and then nearby and distant level of detail we have both of these set to low clutter draw distance is how far away the game will actually render in clutter like a rock or a tree or something so in theory there might be a person hiding behind like a rock at distance and if you have this set too long that rock will appear in the game at distance and you wouldn't see that person whereas if you have this set to short the rock won't render in at long distance and then you might see that person hiding behind it particle quality we have set to low particle quality level we have set to normal and then bullet impacts turn on persistent damage layers turned on. I know I'm not going super in depth with all the settings here. I will do that when the new season comes out. I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on the best settings for the mid season update here. Shader quality, we have this set to low. Tessellation is turned off. And then terrain memory, I have set to medium. On demand texture streaming, we want this off. So the game isn't downloading textures in the background that could cause some lag issues. Streaming quality, I do have set to normal. Volumetric quality, set to low deferred physics quality off water caustics off and then shadow map resolution we have this set to low there's really not much of a difference in terms of fps going from very low to low but there's a pretty big difference in quality of how the shadows look so i'd recommend using low over very low screen space shadows we have turned off spot shadow quality low spot cache i have set to low but if you are experiencing a lot of stutters or hitching in your game, try setting this to higher ultra. Particle lighting set to low, ambient occlusion turned off, screen space reflections off, static reflection quality low, weather grid volumes low. And then we have NVIDIA reflex latency turned on here. And then depth of field, world motion blur, weapon motion blur, all that and film grain turned off or all the way down. This is just going to affect visibility significantly. You don't want any of those on. Moving over to the view tab here, I personally play at 120 FOV. I know field of view is generally personal preference, but I would argue that you should be playing at a field of view over 100. Anywhere between 100 and 120 is going to be good. It just depends on your personal preference. And then ADS field of view, it is very important to have this unaffected as it's going to make your visual recoil just significantly lower, although it will appear more zoomed out when you ADS. So that could be a hindrance when you're shooting people at long range if you're old like me and you're going blind. Uh, weapon field of view, we have this set to wide as well as vehicle field of view here. This will 
will make your weapon appear smaller. And then third person field of view here I have set to 90. First person and third person camera movement. We want both of these set to least so the camera's not shaking all over the place when explosions are going off or you're just running around. It can be very, very distracting. And then default spectator camera. Make sure you set this to game perspective so you're not getting that over to shoulder spectating view that can almost be nauseating. And then third person ADS transition. I don't play the mode. I don't even think the game mode's in the game anymore. But I mean, I have it on third person ADS. First person ADS might be better, but I couldn't tell you for sure. Now moving over to display, I am playing on full screen borderless. So I, I can tab out and everything a lot easier when I'm streaming. Playing in full screen can give you a little boost to your FPS and will give you lower input lag. But the difference in input lag between playing full screen and full screen borderless in my experience isn't really noticeable but the few fps difference would be beneficial but keep in mind playing on full screen borderless is going to lock my screen refresh rate and my display resolution here so you do got to make sure these are both set correctly in the nvidia control panel if you do want to play on full screen borderless i'm sure there's people out there who are playing on full screen borderless and they have their refresh rate set to 60 in the nvidia control panel and they just have no idea so do be sure to double check that dynamic resolution we want this turned off basically if you turn this on your resolution is going to be changing to hit a target frame rate which you would select here you don't want that because that is just going to destroy your vis visual quality aspect ratio we have set to automatic and then v-sync in both the menus and gameplay we want these turned off because this is going to intr introduce a lot of input lag although it can fix screen tearing issues, but ah, man, the input lag with VSync is pretty bad. Custom frame rate limit. I have it set to custom and then click show more and change gameplay custom frame rate limit all the way up to 300. That way it's basically like I'm running unlimited in game and then menu custom frame rate limit. I like to set it to 120. So that way the menus are still a little smooth and then out of focus custom frame rate limit. I mean, doesn't really matter. This is just for when you're tabbed out of the game. Uh, HDR for 99% of you guys, you want this turned off. Now, the only reason I would turn this on is basically if you have an OLED monitor or some sort of really fancy TV that can handle HDR really well. I will say though, if you do get an OLED monitor or play on an OLED TV, HDR on this game looks gorgeous, but you do need to be on Windows 11 to take full advantage of HDR because there's an app on Windows 11 called the Windows HDR calibration tool, which just makes these OLED monitors look absolutely gorgeous gorgeous when you tune them correctly with the downside being that you have to use windows 11 but i am getting used to it now let's move over to the interface settings here and under color customization i would recommend you play on filter 2 set color filter target to both and put the intensity for both interface and world up to 100 backing out of color customization here we're going to be scrolling down to the vertical and horizontal heads up display otherwise known as your hud and you want to turn these all the way down now what this is doing is it's squeezing your HUD in. So important information like your mini map, your teammates in the bottom left is all closer to the center of your screen. So it's much easier to see. If you're playing on a smaller monitor, this might not be an issue and you could probably leave it at a higher number. But if you're playing on a bigger monitor or a bigger TV, then this is very important to turn all the way down. The only downside to turning your HUD down like this is that notifications for air streaks and cluster strikes and stuff like that are going to appear directly in the center of where your crosshairs are when you ADS. And that is definitely something that is very, very annoying and needs to be fixed in this game. Scrolling down a bit more here, we have center dot turned on. This basically just adds a center dot to the center of your screen, right? And that center dot is always there, but when you turn it on, this allows you to set the scale of the center dot so you can make it bigger and a little, little easier to see. I personally prefer this because I think it helps with my centering in game and I I think it could help a lot of you out there as well. Telemetry here, this is how you see your FPS counter, server latency, packet loss, all of that. So just set it to custom, click show more, and you can put anything you want displayed in the top left-hand corner of your screen here. Moving down even further, make sure skip introduction movie is on so you don't have to deal with that every time you open the game. It's very annoying. And then we have a new setting that they just added today called inverted flash. And what it does is it basically makes it so when you get flashed, you kind of get like this low light black effect, literally how they describe 
describe it here instead of your screen just going bright white and which is just super annoying and you know it can kind of cause headaches it's so bright right so this setting fixes that which is a super nice quality of life issue i recommend everyone turn this on and that is it for the interface tab now let's move over to audio there's some new audio settings here too so i recommend playing in pc pc will give you the tightest dynamic range which means low audio like footsteps are going to be louder whereas loud audio like gunshots are going to be quieter and then i click show more here and you want to make sure your music volume is turned all the way down because that can be very distracting in game i turn dialogue volume down to 50 so the operators aren't screaming in my ears all game but it's very important to leave your effects at 100 and then voice chat volume i mean that depends on your setup right and if we go here to speaker output this is another new setting by default it is set to stereo and this is the only setting you could set before today's update but you can now change it to windows default which will allow you to use surround sound audio so if you use something like dolby atmos on your computer which virtualizes surround sound for your headphones you can set this to windows default and now the game will actually take advantage of that so this is super 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 nice and then scrolling down a little bit here we have reduced tonight of sound i recommend turning this on so when you get stunned you don't hear that annoying ear piercing like ringing effect and then something i like to do here is change hit marker sound effects to classic i just prefer how it sounds but that's really personal preference like I said before, I recently upgraded the Windows 11 for the HDR support, so I will not be going full into detail on Windows 11 settings for you guys quite yet, just because I need to do a little more research and I need to learn more about Windows 11 optimization. So I don't really want to give you guys recommendations on Windows 11 quite yet until I learn a lot more about it, because I literally just upgraded. But one thing I will say is you want to turn hardware accelerated GPU scheduling off for this game. And if you're on Windows 11, what you got to do is just search graphic settings so you'll see graphic settings pop up right here and it's going to open up this menu now you're going to see call of duty hq under here so click on that click on options it's going to bring this up here you want to make sure it is set to high performance and then click save and you're good to go there now scroll up to the top of this window here and you'll see change default graphic settings so click on that and you're going to see hardware accelerated gpu scheduling so you want to turn this off and that's about all i can give you guys now for windows 11 optimization when the new season comes out, I will be going full in depth in all the Windows 11 optimizations. And if you guys still want to see Windows 10 optimizations, let me know down in the comments because I can do both. But if this video helped you out, please drop a like and subscribe if you're new here. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Here's the web. Peace.